Hello, my name is John Kelly and this is the Weber Auto YouTube channel. In this episode we will be using the Pico Auto NVH Diagnostic Kit, the PicoScope people, and this NVH Diagnostic Kit allows you to not only determine the source of a vibration on an automobile, but with an optional accessory you can balance a drive shaft in the vehicle of a truck or SUV or car and uh, it's an amazing uh, setup so I'm going to demonstrate how to do that with this this tool set up today now this kit right here comes with an interface box because it has to connect to a Pico oscilloscope box it has the um, accelerometer over here it's a magnetic uh, tip is accelerometer that hooks to the box. It has a microphone that can uh, be used in place of the accelerometer and has a couple of cables at the top here to help all of this connect to the Pico oscilloscope box itself. So if you buy this kit all by itself, that's, that's not enough. Uh, this has to be used with a Pico oscilloscope and there are several different models that will work with it but it, the majority of them are 4000 series oscilloscopes so either a two channel or a four or a four channel uh, 4000 series oscilloscope there's a few three channel I'm sorry 3000 series that will also work you'll have to check the Pico uh, website this particular scope is a 4423 uh, oscilloscope and I'll open that up and show you this particular one, uh, it's just a blue plastic box. We've got four uh, inputs. We have a USB cable uh, to connect the oscilloscope box to the laptop computer. So you need a laptop computer also. Um, this oscilloscope, uh, when we connect up the accelerometer, it'll connect to channel B here. And when we connect up an optional uh, optical interface for measuring the propeller shaft speed and location uh, we connect it to channel A so uh, oh by the way this this rubber uh, case here if you go to picoauto.com they're selling rubber cases now to protect your uh, investment in a in a picoscope box uh, for automotive use if you happen to drop it, it it's going to uh, have a better chance of surviving in one of these rubber uh, cases and they come in black. Okay, so to balance a propeller shaft on a vehicle you need the Pico oscilloscope that I just showed you, the Pico NVH diagnostic kit in the black box that I showed you, and then you also need an optional um, optical interface. Uh, an optical sensor to connect to the to the or to measure the driveline speed. Uh, so there, that kit comes with this optical sensor interface and a cable that goes uh, up to the interface itself or up to the optical sensor. And here on this this vehicle, I've got the optical sensor installed so this is the optical sensor right here uh, when we plug in the sensor to the box and by the way that interface box has four AAA batteries in it and they do go dead after a while uh, the, the um, sensor will flash or sh sh shine a red light you can see that red light that it's shining up onto the propeller shaft and there's a green LED at the bottom of the uh, sensor here now you'll notice on the propeller shaft uh, this is an aluminum propeller shaft and the entire surface is reflective and, and the way this optical sensor works is it needs to have a light flat its own light reflected back to it uh, to measure the, the 
rotational speed of the propeller shaft. And so I put some dark tape around the propeller shaft, just some electrical tape. And notice if I turn the propeller shaft around, we've attached a piece of reflective tape right there. You can see the light shining on it. And you can also see right here at the bottom of the uh, sensor that when that sensor picks up that reflective tape, it flashes the light. Now, that light should come on right there where I've got it positioned uh, with the reflective tape. But if it doesn't come on, then we have to reposition with the, the magnetic attachment that, that comes with the sensor. Reposition the the sensor. There we go. So now the light is on uh, all the time. I can interrupt it with my hand on and off there. <laughs> Almost got the cord right in the way there. But um, we've got that light that turns on and off. You want to make sure you've got a good setup a uh, good adjustment there to where that sensor is picking up uh, its own reflected light. Now notice that there it also comes with not just that optical sensor but it comes with this magnetic base that's adjustable. You can attach it just about anywhere uh, magnetic under the vehicle to get this sensor uh, positioned where you need it to be. Okay so for propeller shaft uh, balancing the and the propeller shaft another name for propeller shaft is the drive shaft but most manufacturers don't call this the propeller shaft they call it or I'm sorry they, they don't call it a drive shaft they call it a propeller shaft um, so uh, in this video we we will use those terms uh, interchangeably now what I have done on this particular propeller shaft is I've added some weight to it to cause it to be out of balance. So right here, I've added a hose clamp. This hose clamp uh, ends up weighing just about uh, half an ounce. Um, and so that is going to throw off the balance of the uh, propeller shaft here and cause what is known as a first order propeller shaft speed related vibration. And what first order means is it will create one shake per revolution. And by this time, you should, you should never attempt to balance a propeller shaft unless you've eliminated runout. And you eliminate runout by putting a dial indicator on the propeller shaft in certain locations and rotating it and seeing it, does it turn perfectly or does it kind of wobble back and forth as it rotates. And I have a separate video on YouTube on how to measure uh, propeller shaft runout. Um, so we've eliminated runout. Runout is not the problem on this vehicle. I've just added some extra weight here. But let's pretend that I haven't added the weight. It's just out, for some reason, it's out of balance. And by the way, anything out of balance will only create one shake per revolution. So now we're going to use that kit that I showed you, along with uh, some computer software to balance the propeller shaft. So if we go to uh, picoauto.com on the internet, we can download a piece of software called Pico Diagnostics. You download it for free. So that I just started the Pico Diagnostic uh, software. And when it starts, down here in the corner, the left-hand corner, uh, it'll tell you if it's detected the picoscope uh, that we've got plugged in with the USB uh, port. So we've got the picoscope 4423 opened successfully. That's what we want to see. And then off to the side here, we have five buttons um, to select from. And the bottom one is NVH. That's noise, vibration, and harshness. And I have a separate video on YouTube on how to use that feature to determine what the source of a vibration is on the vehicle. So, for example, on this vehicle, we had a, a 
we would have a vibration. We'd take it out on a road test. We would use the Pico NVH software to determine that it was a first order propeller shaft speed related vibration and then uh, come back, follow the help file that comes with the Pico uh, software uh, or the vehicle service um, information for each vehicle uh, manufacturer and determine uh, what to do to uh, measure run out and balance the propeller shaft. Well, uh, that's the NVH button. The, uh, the button we are going to use is balancing. And these other three we won't even deal with today. The compression test, battery test, cylinder balance. So today we are doing the balancing. So I'll click on balancing. And when we click on balancing, it gives us an option, a couple of options. Um, the top option here is called a pinion flange trial balance. And that is for those pinion flanges that they connect to a propeller shaft not through a universal joint, uh, the, the typical cross style universal joint that we're uh, used to seeing in pickup trucks, but with the flexible rubber coupling as it's called. Uh, a lot of uh, passenger cars use that instead of a U-joint. Uh, on those there are special balance weights that can be clipped on to the bolts that hold the flexible joint to the pinion flange. Well we are not doing that on this vehicle because this vehicle uses a traditional universal joint. Let me zoom out here so we can see it. So he, we've just got a standard cross style universal joint and for that uh, the software gives us a, a different option, gives us an option that, which is this bottom one of a hose clamp trial balance. So we're going to go with that. Uh, there are two options here. We can go with advanced, which we will not do in this video. I will shoot a separate video on the advanced features of the Pico uh, NVH and balancing software. But let's go with wizard. The wizard is going to walk you through step by step and give you the instructions of how to set the vehicle up to uh, balance a, a propeller shaft in the vehicle. So the first step that it's giving us here, as you can, you can see, is uh, connect the PicoScope to a USB port, which I have done uh, already. We've got this blue uh, cable connecting it to the, the laptop. So that's already connected. And notice in green text up here, it says it, PicoScope detected or connected. Uh, it would be red text uh, if it was not connected. So we will click next. Now it tells us to connect the accelerometer to channel B of the oscilloscope. So I've got the oscilloscope uh, right here and channel B is right here. So here is our NVH interface box for the accelerometer. I'm going to plug that in right there. And if we go back to the, the screen, um, it says tap the sensor to verify signal. And it, we've got this signal quality uh, bar graph there. And so I'll, I've got the sensor attached to the, the differential. But let me take it down. I'm just tapping on the the sensor itself and we get the the green bar graph going across the the screen so uh, that's good so now we will click next to continue and it tells us to mount the accelerometer on the differential uh, housing so where we are to mount this is about right here right behind the the pinion flange right about the six o'clock uh, position pointing up. The magnet is very strong. Okay, we've got it pointing up at the six o'clock position out of the way of all these rotating parts. And so now we will click next on the software. Now it tells us to connect the optical sensor to channel A of the oscilloscope. So back over here on the, 
the oscilloscope right here. I've got the optical sensor interface box. I've got it plugged in to channel A right there. And then I've got the, the sensor um, wire going up to the sensor itself that we've already uh, looked at here on the vehicle. Okay, so then it, the software, uh, we're going to click next. The software tells us to check the signal from the optical sensor. So let me zoom in so you can see the, the screen here. And it says opto signal not detected. But if I come over to the sensor and inter interrupt the, the, ref the reflection. So I'm just cutting the beam with my hand. Notice that it says opto signal detected in the green there. If you're not interrupting it, it's always going to show that the sensor signal is not detected. That's normal, so don't, don't worry about that. So we will click next. As long as it turns green when you interrupt it, it's good. So we will click next. It tells us to mount the optical sensor base to a suitable surface and position the sensor with the lever focused on a half inch strip of reflective tape. Well, the opto, optical sensor kit comes with reflective tape. You just chop off a little half inch strip and put it on the uh, on the propeller shaft. But like I said, if your propeller shaft is aluminum and reflective anyway, you want to put something there to give it some contrast like black electrical tape. If it's a, a dark propeller shaft, you may not need to do that. But you may need to put some uh, tape on there just to give the uh, or like some duct tape or masking tape to give it some place to stick if you've got a real rusty or oily uh, propeller shaft. All right, let's click next to continue. The next thing it wants us to do is enter, it says attach two hose clamps around the shaft, mark the band at the end of the adjusting screw, remove the clamps, and cut the excess band at the mark. So let me zoom out and show you what we're talking about here. So we are going to use two hose clamps, two hose clamps to balance the propeller shaft uh, on this vehicle. And what we don't want to have happen is when you put the hose clamp on to have an excessive amount of this band coming up past the, the screw because it can bend out. So you're going to, going to wrap it around the propeller shaft and put a little mark where you, the excessive amount should be cut off and then get a pair of tin snips and cut it off. And notice that I've cut it off on a 45 degree angle on the, the tips there, just a slight uh, bevel so that we don't have a sharp edge to uh, cut somebody. But that way when we put these hose clamps on the propeller shaft will tighten it up and there won't be any excess band sticking out past the head of the, the screw. Another thing about these hose clamps, um, these hose clamps weigh about a half, a half an ounce, half of an ounce each. And if we were to take both hose clamps and put them right next to each other like this, that would give us an equivalent weight of one ounce. But if we were to turn and mount them 180 degrees from each other, so totally opposite of each other, like this, they counterbalance each other and the equivalent weight is zero. So we can go anywhere from a full ounce of weight to zero ounces of weight just by spreading these hose clamps apart. And that's what this uh, balancing software will do, is it'll find the heavy spot, determine how much these hose clamps weigh, uh, which we have to m measure them and enter that into the software, and then it will tell you where to put these hose clamps and how far to spread them apart on the propeller shaft to give us a good balance on the vehicle. So uh, I've already cut these uh, hose clamps to the right length so that we don't have any overlap on the propeller shaft. But here on the, 
the computer screen, besides telling us to cut the, the bands to the right length, it wants us to enter right here the weight of the hose clip of the hose clamp. Now the hose clip is just the screw head portion of the clamp. And so let me bring a digital scale over here and you're probably going to need a digital scale because although the majority of uh, hose clamp clips that I've uh, measured are in the 14 gram range which is the default value of the uh, of the software uh, not every hose clamp weighs 14 grams so I have a digital scale here I just bought it from a office supply uh, store and you may have may have something already a, po a postal scale but um, I'm going to set that right here on my little uh, tray. Uh, I'm going to power this thing up. I've already taken a third hose clamp. So you're going to need a, a third hose clamp. And you need to cut off the head of the clamp. So I, I cut off the clamp head right here even with the the end of the screw and I'm going to set that right here on this digital scale. Let me make sure it's on. Yes it is. And uh, I'm going to set it. Let me turn it off. Turn it back on. Alright. It's in grams. We can toggle between grams and uh, pounds and so let me just set this head on there and I'm currently getting 14 grams so that's pretty typical of what you're going to see uh, on hose clamps but if you have a hose clamp that's larger or smaller then don't just don't just assume that it's 14 grams because if you don't enter the proper weight uh, it can throw off the balancing it'll it'll tell you where to put the hose clamps to counterbalance the propeller shaft and when you're all all done using the software uh, it didn't balance uh, at the end of the balancing routine with the software it doesn't show that it's that it's balanced like it should so we have to um, make sure that you know what your hose clip weight is. Let me measure that again. 14 grams. Okay. So, um, let's go back to the software. We are just about ready to actually start uh, the balancing procedure. So, back here on the software, the default value is 14 grams. Already got that entered. So I'm just going to click next. The next thing it wants us to do is to measure the circumference. Let me zoom back in so you can see that. Measure the circumference of the propeller shaft. So the circumference is how far around the propeller shaft is. So right up here, we are going to take a flexible um, tape measure. And it needs to measure in millimeters. And we need to be as precise and as accurate as we can while we take these measurements because it affects the accuracy of the balance. And so what I've, well, the, the, the optical sensor that comes with the optical sensor kit that's an option for the NVH diagnostic kit comes with a flexible um, tape measure and that flexible tape measure uh, I've used it probably a dozen times by now and it, it starts to get uh, pretty worn uh, with all the markings that we have to make on the propeller shaft so I've looked for an alternate uh, method 
And what I found is that on, uh, I, I like uh, home uh, repair places, Home Depot, Lowe's, whatever. Uh, you can buy a, uh, from Sterrett, what they call a measure stick. And it's a steel tape measure with an adhesive back. Uh, it has both uh, inches and millimeters uh, that it'll measure in. And they're just a couple of bucks each. And so I've, I've purchased those. Um, they actually have a, an adhesive back on it. And just for an experiment, uh, I decided, well, I'm, I'm going to see if it'll just stick to this aluminum propeller shaft. And, of course, the shaft needs to be really clean for the adhesive to stick. But um, when you put the tape measure on and measure all the way around, uh, like I've done with this one, it started right here at the zero mark. Let me zoom in a little closer so you can, you can see. So right here is the zero mark. And we go around this direction. This is the direction of rotation. I put a little arrow off to the side here indicating that when this vehicle moves forward, the propeller shaft turns this way. So as we measure going all the way around, um, here's 10 millimeters, 20, 30, 40, 50. And as we continue around, here's 300. 310 and this propeller shaft ended up being exactly 320 millimeters in circumference and so that is the number that we are going to enter into the software over here so let me come over here and we'll just punch in three two zero and it'll auto if we hit tab and tab down to the next box in the software it um, automatically calculates when we punch in the circumference of 320 it automatically calculates the diameter of the propeller shaft to be 102 millimeters and then of course the radius of a circle is half the diameter so 51 millimeters would be the diameter 51 millimeters is also 5.1 centimeters and I'll I'll explain why you need, why you may want to pay attention to that uh, a little bit later when we're balancing uh, the propeller shaft. I think it'll help make sense of uh, what we're doing in a few steps. Okay, so we've entered the diameter of the uh, propeller shaft, and I would not recommend sticking this uh, flexible tape measure to a propeller shaft with the intent of leaving it there for uh, or after you're done but I have before the video I have run it up to a really high speed it did stay very well and I, I think it would work just fine for your initial um, measurements and there's a lot of markings that we're going to make on this propeller shaft and so you'll need a like a fine tip a sharpie permanent marker um, to make uh, some marks on this uh, propeller shaft. Uh, shut it off, Laura. Okay, so um, in the software, let's let's go with next. Uh, it tells us before you begin. It gives us some pre pre balancing uh, warnings, and I'll add a few extras uh, also. Uh, before you begin this balancing procedure, um, ensure the vehicle is properly supported. Refer to vehicle service information to determine what properly supported means. Well, here on this truck, um, we've got it up on the hoist. As you can see, the hoist arms there. But we've got it sitting on these tall uh, jack stands, uh, these high horse uh, jack stands and so and then we've let the hoist down to where the full vehicle sus weight of the vehicle is sitting on the suspension and by doing that we put the propeller shaft and the suspension system in its normal position for driving down the road and you want to do that because we do not want the angle of the uh, 
the working angle of the U joint, the angle of the propeller shaft versus the pinion shaft, uh, causing two shakes per revolution, uh, which it can do if the angles are incorrect. And I have a separate video on YouTube of how to measure those angles and and correct those. Uh, so we have to have the propeller shaft at its normal position, so the suspension loaded on the vehicle. All right. The next thing the the software tells us. Uh, to do is to uh, remove rocks and debris from the tires. So we have uh, these tires are going to be spinning at, at a fairly high speed as we are running this vehicle on the hoist. Any rocks and debris in there can go flying out and possibly hit you or somebody else or a vehicle and cause some damage. Um, you do not need to, I've had a lot of people ask me, you do not need to remove the tires and wheels when you're doing a propeller shaft balance. They rotate at a speed that is the axle gear ratio slower than the propeller shaft. Even if they were out of balance and shaking, it would not affect the balancing of the propeller shaft because it's a different frequency. All right, the next thing it says, ensure all the leads are clear of rotating components. So all of our uh, accelerometer and optical sensor leads need to be um, out of the way so they don't get caught up in rotating parts. Uh, the next thing is disable anti-lock brake system and traction control if equipped. Uh, if a lot of vehicles have a button to just turn off traction control, if you don't see that, you may be able to pull the fuse or just with the key off, unplug the anti-lock brake module electrical connector and that'll disable the traction control. Also turn off uh, air conditioning and other accessories. Uh, one other word of, of caution and, and that is that on vehicles that uh, have a center differential transfer case and I have a separate video on center differential transfer cases and how they operate. Um, those vehicles are typically all-wheel drive vehicles but I'm not talking about crossover SUVs, uh, and I have a separate video on crossover SUVs also and the differences in the powertrain there. I'm talking about just a regular full-size SUV or pickup truck that has an all-wheel drive uh, feature. A lot of those have a center differential transfer case that acts just like an open differential uh, in, a rear, in a rear axle. And so what that would... Uh, cause to happen uh, potentially is if you did not lock it into four-wheel drive on the transfer case itself, so our transfer case is up here, if you don't lock that into four-wheel drive then it will act like an open differential of a rear uh, axle here. And you've all seen where one tire can spin and the other one pretty much sits there. Well what w can happen with the center differential is one propeller shaft can spin and the other one just sits there. Typically it's the rear propeller shaft that does the spinning and the front one just stays stopped. But the problem is it's spinning twice as fast as it normally would. And that would cause, if, especially if you had a rear differential that had an open differential rather than a, a locking or a limited slip differential, that would cause one of your tires to spin four times faster than it normally would. So a speed of 35 miles an hour on the speedometer would cause the propeller shaft to spin twice as fast, which would cause the tire to spin twice as fast. So uh, 35 times 4 is 140 miles an hour that tire would be spinning, and that's, that's a bad idea. So um, lock it in four-wheel drive. That way it would be spinning uh, half as half as fast and if you end up having to uh, spin things that fast then you want to remove the tire and wheel assemblies put the lug nuts back on to hold their, the brakes in place so that we don't run the danger of having tires uh, come apart because they're speed rated and most of them are not speed rated to the 140 uh, miles an hour that you could easily exceed okay well let's go back to the software here and see what's next so if we click next on the software, it tells us to select the shaft speed. So what we want to know is at what speed is the propeller shaft rotating and causing the vibration. And so 
uh, tells us to run the engine with the transmission in high gear but not direct drive, not one to one. And note the RPM that can be held steady at highway speed and then place the transmission in neutral and stop the engine. Now we can also edit manually. We can punch this number in manually if we are already know what speed that is. But let's, let's do it. Um, go ahead and start it up and take it up to the, the speed. So we've got a red, we've got some red, the red uh, number zero there. But notice as we start to bring the, the propeller shaft up to the speed where it was vibrating, that the numbers will, will switch from red to green. It'll switch to green when it determines that the, uh, the vibration is occurring. So when it's green, like right there, about 2,500 RPM, I'm going to click next. Okay. Okay, it tells us the propeller shaft wizard is complete. We will hit finish. And now it takes us to a new screen. All right. Uh, at this screen, we are going to let me back it up here just a, a little bit. Uh, it's given us a warning tone uh, telling us that it's not detecting the uh, optical sensor. Let me kill the sound. I don't want to hear that. There we go. Um, throughout the rest of these, or throughout the rest of the procedure here, it's going to tell us to make some marks at different locations around the propeller shaft using that uh, flexible uh, tape measure. And we know for sure that it's going to um, have us make at least three more marks. And what I've determined after uh, doing this uh, procedure multiple times now is that I'm going to make all those marks at once rather than uh, stop and make uh, marks uh, only when it tells me. So, the well, let's go back to the screen just for a second. I guess I need to show you something else. So, it, it shows us a graphic right here of the propeller shaft. And in this first step, it tells us to place the first uh, clamp on the shaft and mark that position as zero. And then place the second clamp on the shaft at 160 millimeters from zero. Well, if you recall, this propeller shaft is 320 millimeters in circumference. So half of 320 is 160. So we are going to just simply make a mark at zero, which I've already done on the propeller shaft. So let's take a look at that. So let's get the zero back around here. So we've got zero right here, and I am going to um, extend that mark out a little bit longer. And what I'd recommend is that you use some sort of a, a straight edge to extend that mark and, and to draw all of your marks. Uh, you want to be as precise and as accurate as you can. And what I've done here is I've tried to make the zero mark uh, approximately centered with this U-joint bearing cap. Why? It's just a personal preference. You don't have to do it there. You can actually do it anywhere you want. It's just I, I think that's a great uh, starting point. So I'm going to take a fine point uh, permanent marker and try to stay parallel with the um, propeller shaft as best I can. And that is our zero mark. Okay. Now it tells us to make a mark at 160 millimeters. And 
they mean 160 millimeters in the direction of rotation. So our direction of rotation is this way. Um, and so we will start at zero right here and work our way around. So here's 10, 20, 30, 40. Here's 100 millimeters. And here's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 160 millimeters. And it should be no surprise it's dead center with this other U-joint bearing cap, which is why I line it up with the bearing caps. I, I like a visual uh, indicator that it's, that it's there. Okay, so that's our uh, 160. So I'm just going to write 160 there. Now, it's also going to have us make two other marks at uh, what we're going to do is take the, the circumference of the propeller shaft and divide it in three. So if we take uh, 320 uh, millimeters, which is the, di or the circumference of this propeller shaft, we divide that by three. Every 100 and, well, six, 100, 107 millimeters, uh, we are going to have to make another mark. So if we start back here at zero and we come forward to 107 millimeters here's 100 here's 110 um, i'm just going to come back three millimeters to 107 i'm just going to whoop now the software does not tell you to do this right now but it's going to tell you to do it it just seems easier to me, 107, to do it right now while I'm already making marks and have the, the tape measure out. Okay, then um, since that's one third of the way around the propeller shaft uh, at 107, we need to go another 107. So 107 plus 107 is 214. So here's the 200, 210, 215, 220. Let's go with the 214. About right there. Try to keep it as parallel as you can. So right there is 214. Okay, those are the three additional marks that you have to make on the propeller shaft. The software is going to make you do it anyway. So as I said, I like to do it. I've done enough of these now that I'm just going to do it all at once. So back to the, the software screen here. It, it's telling us to put a host or put one host clamp at zero and the other one totally opposite of it at 160. If you recall from our discussion, that means they counterbalance each other and that's like they're not there at all. But at least they'll be on the propeller shaft and ready to uh, counterbalance. So let's go back to the propeller shaft. And let's go to the, let's start at zero right here. I'm going to take a hose clamp, put it around the propeller shaft, and we're going to center that hose clamp right on zero. So I've got a little too tight. So I've made some alignment marks on the hose clamp itself also. So there is zero. Notice I made a just a reference mark on the hose clamp head so that I will always put that hose clamp head uh, at the same, same point. The software doesn't tell me to do that, but uh, I've done enough of these that it, it helps me to keep everything aligned. So right there, I'm going to tighten that up at the zero mark. We'll come back and we're still lined up. So now 
we'll come around to the 160 millimeter mark halfway around and we'll put the other hose clamp on and we'll center it on the 160 millimeter mark Okay, and we don't want these right touching each other, just a little bit of gap, but there's our 160. I've made a reference mark on that hose clamp head too. It's nice and centered. Uh, just be aware when you tighten these hose clamps down, they tend to creep a little bit in the direction of the rotation of the propeller shaft. But I'm still lined up. Oh, also notice it, uh, the direction of rotation is is downward. Uh, we've got the screw of the clamp facing that direction, the head of the clamp facing the opposite direction. Okay, so this is our first step and on the software uh, they call that the initial run. So there is a, um, let me bring that in just a little bit, a little bit closer here, this green button right here that says initial run. We're going to click on that and then we're going to take it up to this, the 2500 or so RPM, propeller shaft RPM, where it was vibrating before, and take a measurement. Now, we have to do an initial run and then three calibration runs. So the initial run is with the hose clamps opposite of each other. All right, go ahead and take it up. Okay. So on the software, that there's a bar graph on the right, that red bar graph. We want it to be green. It needs to be in the green zone. And it's only a 100 RPM window that we have to deal with there. So it's, it's kind of hard to keep it centered, especially where I've got a helper up inside the cab that can't see this. Um, we practiced and have it um, the speed approximately where we need it to be. But I, uh, notice off to the left of that red bar graph is a completion graph. So once this is green long enough, this other graph will start to go up. So there it came up just a little bit. We want it. So now we've come down just a little bit too low. There we go. We're in the green. As we stay there, notice the other graph starts to go up. We want it to go all the way up to 100% as part of this initial run. little bit higher almost there there we go so now okay so now it's it tells us the initial run is complete uh, place the transmission in neutral stop the engine and notice on the instructions for the placement of the the hose clamps now now it tells us to put both hose clamps right next to each other at the zero millimeter mark. Okay, so uh, let's go up to the up to the propeller shaft. So here's the one already at the 160. So we're going to move that around to the zero mark. right there and then I'm going to tighten it up so now we've got both clamps right at the zero mark okay that looks good 
I'm going, uh, if we go back to the software here, now we're going to start our first of three uh, calibration runs. And each run will have us put both hose clamps right next to each other at three equally spaced locations around the propeller shaft. And that's why I made those marks in the first place. And as long as I calculated right, uh, you'll see here after we finish this calibration run, the, the marks that it's telling us to put on are already there. So I'm gonna, going to click calibration run one. Okay, take it up. So now we'll watch the bar graph on the right again. And what we're doing with these calibration runs is by putting both of these hose clamps next to each other, uh, it's going to either accidentally make the overall vibration worse or better. And we'll try that in three different locations and determine which of those was the better location uh, and we can mathematically determine how much of a difference it made in each location and then determine where the heavy spot is and uh, then it'll tell us after our third calibration run where to put the uh, clamps to counterbalance the imbalance the hose clamp that I put on so we're just about done with our completion graph there we go okay Okay, so now notice it's telling us to put, if we look over here at the, the instructions, it's telling us to put the uh, both clamps at 210 uh, millimeters. Well, 210, uh, let's see, we had, we made a mark at 214. So I don't know why it's saying 210 because 210 is not one third of uh, the 320 millimeter uh, propeller shaft circumference. So let's move these around, but it's only four millimeters off. But I'm going to put these at 214 rather than the 210. Um, there's not a lot of difference there, but I understand what they're doing here, and I'm not sure why it, it told us 210 exactly, but let's see, maybe 214, maybe, I, well actually I suspect I know why. 210 is an easy measurement to get with most flexible uh, rulers, um, flexible tape measures. 214 might be a little more difficult to uh, mark on a depending on how precise your ruler is so all right I've got them both on 214 it tells us 210 but I don't believe it I think 214 is where they really wanted it and I'm going to click calibration run 2 on the software now um, oh I, for <laughs> I forgot to show you on the propeller shaft so I've got both hose clamps at the 214 millimeter mark, which like I said, is just a tiny bit away from that 210 where the software is telling us uh, to put it. Okay, so let's go back to our second calibration run on the software. Okay, take it up again. We'll watch our bar graph. I'm signaling to my driver through text messaging uh, to go higher or lower. You can do that if you need somebody to help you. Or just put the laptop up in the driver's seat with you as you do it. This can be done on the floor with j short jack stands and a creeper. Oh, right on the line. Just a tiny bit lower. So close.
Oh, almost there. <laughs> now too low. It's a little frustrating, but that's just how it is. There we go, and we're done with calibration run two. Okay. Okay, so calibration run two is complete. Notice now it is telling us to put the hose clamps at 110 uh, millimeters, where we calculated 107 would be a third of the way around. But I really do think it's just for ease of measurement um, that they're doing that. So let's go back up to our uh, propeller shaft. And we're going to move both of these hose clamps to the well, it says 110, but I'm going to, I'm going to go to 107 because that's exactly a third the way around. We're only three millimeters off. So right there, tighten both of those down. So there we are, 107, close enough to 110. We're only talking three millimeters. All right, now we're going to do our last calibration run, calibration run three. Okay, take it up again. And let's go back to the computer software. Okay, nice good green zone there. That's perfect. Okay, almost done. There we go. Okay. All right, so we just finished our third calibration run, and now it tells us that we had an initial imbalance of 10 grams uh, per centimeter. Now, the, the maximum allowed is tw 20 grams. It's not per centimeter. It, it's 20 grams per, or <laughs> 10, the, the maximum, spe <laughs> maximum spec. All right, we'll cut that out. The, it shows us that the initial imbalance is 10 gram centimeters. And that means that since we had a 5.1, centimeter radius from our uh, discussion earlier in the video uh, and we have basically a, a two gram imbalance shown here on the on the software so a two gram imbalance here in the red at about 210 millimeters 211 millimeters that if um, oh I'm sorry I was messing up the 
We'll cut that out again. Okay. It's, it's showing us on the screen that our initial imbalance was 10 gram centimeters, which meant that there was an imbalance of 2 grams at about, if you look at the, the screen closely enough here, about 211 millimeters. Well, 2 grams multiplied by the radius of the propeller shaft, which from our math earlier uh, we determined was 5.1 uh, centimeters, 2 times 5.1 is roughly uh, 10 gram centimeters, which is what we've got. So it's telling us that we're out of balance by 2 grams at 211 millimeters, and we want to counterbalance that 2 grams at uh, opposite of that on the uh, propeller shaft with 2 more grams of weight. But the problem we have is that the hose clamps weigh 14 grams each. So how do you make a 14 gram hose clamp balance where two grams are needed? Well, you spread the clamps apart. And so what the software is doing is, to tell, is telling us to spread these clamps. We'll put our first clamp, as it shows us uh, here, at 130 millimeters and the next one at 300 millimeters. And that will spread them apart and give us an equivalent weight in between those two um, at about uh, 51 millimeters would be the, the counterbalance spot, uh, an equivalent weight of 2 grams. So remember, when the hose clamps are totally opposite of each other, it's 0 grams. As we start to move them closer together, we, we get 1 gram, 2 gram, and, and everything in between. 3, 4, 5, all the way up to 14 grams each, 28 grams when they're right next to each other. So by spreading them apart, we counterbalance. Now, just a, a point of interest here, let's see if it detects, if it detected where the hose clamp uh, that I added to cause this thing to go out of balance was at. Uh, it's telling us it, the heavy spot is at about 200 and um, 11 millimeters, 211. So if we go up here to the propeller shaft, and it does not always work out uh, pointing right at the heavy spot of the, uh, where I put the hose clamp. The hose clamp I put is closer to 100 millimeters. It's telling us that about 200, here's 211, here's 210, somewhere right here, this 211 right there is the heavy spot. So I'm just for grins, I'm going to put the, the letter H for the heavy spot and a little arrow pointing right there to about the 211 millimeter mark. And then we're going to spread the hose clamps out evenly. One of them will put at 10, or I'm sorry, one of them will put at 130 millimeters, the other one at 300. So here's 210. So we'll come back to 130 which is right here for the one hose clamp. And let me make a little mark there. And we'll put the other one at 200. So there's 200. Or no, 300. At 300 millimeters, which is right here. So we'll put a mark right there at 300 and we'll extend that mark out because that's that second hose clamp that we need to to move. Okay, so let's move these clamps. One of them at 130 millimeters and one of them at 300. So we're close to the 300 here, so let's just move this hose clamp right here to 300. Right there. I'm going to tighten that down. Make sure it stayed centered. Yes. Okay, then we'll move the other hose clamp to 130 millimeters, which is right there. And we'll tighten that down. Make sure it's still centered. Yes. Okay, so now let's go back to the software. And 
This is what's called a verification run. So the, the green button off to the side there, I'm, I'm going to click with the mouse, verification run. So we had an initial imbalance of 10, which is below the 20 maximum. So this isn't a very bad uh, vibration that I've created. But let's see if we can make it any better by adding these, these clamps. Okay, take it up again. Okay, there we go. Okay. All right, and looking at the software, if you recall, we started with 10 gram centimeters of imbalance. Notice that we did not improve it. We're at 10.4 gram centimeters. We're still below the, the 20, but I want to make it, I want to make it a little bit better. So to make it better, we need to counterbalance it with a little bit more weight. And so with my ex experimenting, what I've found is that if you just move these hose clamps just a tiny bit closer together in small increments, so here's our heavy spot. We're going to move this hose clamp up here a little bit closer to it, this hose clamp a little bit closer to it. We will just move it. I'm just going to move it about 10 centimeters, which is about the width from the top of that uh, screw right there to the mark that I made. Well, there's 300 that we're on. The 90 is where we want to be lined up with. So to the base of this clamp to that center there is about 10 millimeters. I'm just going to move that up a little bit, tighten it up. We'll come over here. M we will move this one down 10 millimeters, bringing it a little closer to the heavy spot. So by bringing these hose clamps closer, so we were at 130. Now we're at approximately 140. So now we will tighten that up. And now if we go back to the software, it has an additional uh, button on the right-hand side here. It says free run, and that lets us fine-tune our uh, balance. Okay, take it up again, and let's see if we can improve that any. Okay, there we are in the green zone. Almost done.
Oh, so close. Come on. <laughs> Almost. There we go. Okay. <laughs> so, we actually made it worse by bringing it uh, closer together. So, we're, it's still below the 20, but we increased the imbalance by six. <laughs> six and a half gram centimeters so that fine tuning was a little too much so let's take it back and we'll bring it in just just not 10 millimeters we'll split the difference we'll go for uh, five so remember as long as it's below 20 supposedly that's fixed but the true tell is is the vibration gone have you reduced the amplitude of the vibration and the initial imbalance is showed was only 10 um, gram centimeters to begin with we have not reduced it mathematically according to the sensor here but um, in re in real life when you're doing this for a customer vehicle uh, I don't care what the numbers say. If you've reduced the vibration, how it feels while you're driving, then that's all the customer is really caring about. All right, well, let's try this again. We're, g we're going to do free run again. We can do that as many times as we want. Okay, take it up again. Okay, getting closer. Okay. Huh. Well, we still haven't improved it. We, we improved it a little bit from how bad we made it uh, to begin with. But uh, let's go back to where it told us to put them in the first place. So I'm going to line this right up again on the the 130 where it was, and we'll put this one back to the 300 where it was. Right there. Tighten that down. Okay, do it again.
Okay. Huh. Well, we, we're not having much luck here. We brought it down to 12 gram centimeters. And we started at 10.4. That is decreasing it. So, against logic, I'm going to move those hose clamps just a little bit farther apart rather than closer together. That's what the fine tuning is all about here. Just going to move it a little bit farther apart. Just about five millimeters farther apart on each each end. We'll click free run again. Let's try it again. Okay, take it up. Okay. All right, there we go, finally. Okay. So, this is this is not at all unusual. It it is frustrating. Um but keep in mind we were we're balancing a propeller shaft that was only uh 10 gram centimeters out of balance in the first place which is considered in, in specification. Now, if we look at our numbers here, we are at, we've, we've cut it in half. We're down to 5.1 gram centimeters, which is excellent, 5.1. And I did that by spreading the clamps apart just a tiny bit from their initial uh, 130 and the 300 millimeter marks. And that's just how this is. You're not going to come in with this software and whiz bang boom have it all done in, in after your uh, three calibration runs and your verification. This is probably the two dozenth time I've done this on a, on a vehicle. I've tried different vehicles uh, every single time. Uh, you have to fine tune it, uh, either to get it to get below the 20 gram centimeters or to improve it like we did here. Uh, five gram centimeters is, is really good. Uh, I had a pickup truck on here on the hoist uh, a couple of weeks ago and did it with, or I checked it just without any extra clamps added and it was at 3.1 or 3.5 I think. So 5.1 is pretty good and we may be able to fine tune it and get it even closer. But I just wanted to show you that moving these clamps uh, closer together or farther apart gives us uh, the ability to fine tune the software and it gives us or not fine tune the software fine tune the the balancing so this has been a demonstration of using the pico diagnostic software with the balancing feature to balance a propeller shaft uh, on a vehicle and uh, let's see, the overall time it took us 43 minutes, that's pretty typical. And that does not include put parking the vehicle on the hoist. So I, I would imagine that I would quote someone uh, uh, at least one hour's labor to do a uh, balancing uh, for the propeller shaft. And th we did a rear propeller shaft, we could just easily do a front uh, propeller shaft also. We did the rear of this propeller shaft just because it was close and convenient, but we could have just as easily done the front. How do we know which one is worse, the, the front or the rear of the propeller shaft? Well, the sensor itself, using the NVH software rather than the balancing software, will give us an amplitude reading of how harsh the vibration is. And we can have the sensor here at the axle. We can have the sensor at the back of the transfer case or the transmission see which one has the higher amplitude and that's the 
end of the propeller shaft that you should be trying to counterbalance. All right. Well, this worked out great. Have a good day.